come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination, which you can help us out with by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button, because all of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. These are the internet radio superstars. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. Sean is on assignment mm-hmm, tonight mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by sean scratch that me <laughs> bam <laughs> holly what did we watch tonight tonight we watched frailty from the year 2001 oh 21 oh this movie can drink now 21 years old yeah. Huh? <laughs> wow yeah technically i think the release date was 2002 so so happy 20th anniversary 20 years, i guess yeah, yeah. <laughs> and but, i saw it in the theater i can't even remember yeah. what somewhere back then mm-hmm. yeah Directed, directed by. by oh 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 <laughs> <laughs> bill paxton who yeah no yeah the actor the actor <laughs> and director bill yeah. paxton that's right wow he's this on is, the wall right uh yes he's I gotta be so uh if we consult the uh freak show he's been on fame, it for a while i think right? we did predator 2 yeah i was like i think he's near dark near dark and um uh uh there's got to uh, be another one right Right off the top of our heads. Oh, wait, is he? Is it him or Pullman that's in uh, um, Lake Placid? That's uh, Pullman. That's Pullman. Okay. Um, Streets of Fire. All right. Streets right, of Fire. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then obviously Near Dark and Predator 2. Yeah. Yep. Because Bill Paxton one of those, is one of those guys who, before you knew who he was, you had seen him in a lot of stuff. Before and you knew yep. who he was, you recognized him. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, sure. I think uh, one of his big claims to fame now is that he's one the only actor, I think, to be killed by a uh, predator, an alien, and a Terminator. I think so. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. What an honor. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous. I, I wish that was me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, you know, when you go back, because I didn't know who he was when I saw Terminator, and then you go back and you're like, oh, it's Bill Paxton, and now it seems like I'm seeing, like, a bunch of his stuff, actually. It's probably, he's going to be in next week's movie, if that pans out, uh, (laughs) and a lot of- Oh, uh, I didn't realize he was in next week's movie. Yeah, Yeah, I didn't either. Because he had bit parts in, like, Mortuary and, like, all these movies that I'm watching now, like, oh, shit, it's Bill Paxton. So we could do, like, a sideshow of just Bill Paxton stuff, it sounds like, wow. I love me some Bill Paxton. That's part of the reason I wanted to bring this, because this was my first viewing of this. I oh, awesome. Seen, yeah, I hadn't seen this. I just saw, I don't even remember how it came up, but I saw Bill Paxton, Matthew McConaughey, and um, I saw that he directed it. And then I read what it was about, and I was like, well, this sounds like it's got my name written all over it. Mm-hmm. I have to watch this. And then I was like, this has to be a freak show movie. And then the more like reviews I saw, they're like, oh my God, the ending. Oh my God. I was like, yep, I'm bringing it. Yeah. We're doing this. That was what I remembered the most about this movie. The ending and like the last shot, especially. Oh, so you knew about the ending before you? uh... No, because a I didn't. um, I did not have time to research this because you know last minute pick. Um, (laughs) Sean, thank you. Circumstances. Thank you, Sean. Um, So, but I think I was fortunate to not research it. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. You just knew it was going to be a crazy ending. You just didn't know what it was going to be. Exactly. And I was like, I read a little bit, and I was like, you know what? I don't have time to research, and also I don't think I should. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to call it. Yeah. Sometimes it's best to go in blind. Well, I guess that uh, means we should probably lower the uh, spoiler warning. uh, We're going to spoil the shit. Yeah, because I think in order to talk about the movie and analyze what you're actually what it what it's trying to accomplish, we're going to have to. We're going to talk talk about about what we're seeing and what it eventually like reveals. We're probably going to talk about the same time, right? Right. Yeah, I think you have. But this is. I mean, I guess. Do you think this is a weird? Okay, so uh, Bill Paxton, you know, was a was a famous actor. At yeah. the point in time when he made this movie. Yeah. Is this an odd choice, do you think, for a first time director effort from a guy who's like the star of Mighty Joe Young and uh, Twister? Not and- in a post <laughs> seven world. Right. Like, n- this is like yeah. that rash of like, we're all trying to capture the magic of seven. So, like, it yeah. makes sense that I like you'd grab onto like a concept that has been proven to work, you know? Yeah. yeah. And you're saying seven did seven. Is that saying- kind of like. It's grimy yeah. procedural religious horror. Yeah, religious with yeah. a big twist at the end. Okay. Yeah, and Movie, we yeah. and we already established like um, there was a big 
it, in 1990 and 2000, there was a big surge in religious movies mm-hmm. um, because of, you know, the Y2K scare right. and Armageddon mm-hmm. theories and yep. all this stuff. So, you know, we had Stigmata, we had mm-hmm. End of Days, we had all of these mm-hmm. like religious movies coming out. We had all, There was a lot of exorcism movies coming yeah. out this yeah. time. Mm-hmm. You know, that was a big deal. So this seems right on par for this time period, I think. Right. And I, I can see why he would jump on this bandwagon. Mm-hmm. Because I guess originally it was offered to him as a actor thing. Yeah. And he, the way that I read it, because I read an interview with him when he was talking about like, mm-hmm. well, Bill, why, why, why this one? Yeah. Right? You know, it's like you're doing movies with James Cameron. I think he had done Titanic, right. you know, prior to this. He did right? do Titanic. Yeah. He's the guy in, in uh, he's head of the crew on the yeah. ship that's looking mm-hmm. for the necklace. Did yeah. you ever see, what was, is it? Um, Ghosts of the Abyss, the uh, James Cameron like documentary, and yeah, it's Bill yeah, yeah. Paxton. Like, he, yeah, Bill, Bill Paxton's Paxton. with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's awesome. On the, on the trip down. Yeah, to I was all about that. I went through a weird Titanic phase. I don't, I don't know. No, I think, know I think most children did, in the right? '90s did. I think we all did. Like, yeah. I, yeah. Titanic was just one of those like cultural moments that I don't think we'll ever have again. Yeah. I like. I just remember the entire world being consumed by madness for that movie yeah. yeah and even like i for some reason even like pre-titanic the movie i had a weird fascination with the shipwreck yeah, yeah. wasn't there an anniversary in there somewhere i think that because i feel like every time an anniversary comes around interest d- grows again i remember when i worked at barnes and noble when it was the 100th anniversary and yeah. there was a whole thing for it mm-hmm yeah, that would make sense. Stay tuned yeah. for our Titanic podcast. Oh, no. Spin-off series. Oh, no. Oh, wow. uh, <laughs> um, God damn it, I love that movie. I don't care. I don't care who knows it. Well, the um, I guess so, you know, it's like he he's a, a big time guy, a, a, yeah. a actor, offered this. And I think what he was saying was he saw it in a certain way and he... You know, once you kind of begin to visualize the thing, he's like, mm-hmm. if they go to any director, yeah, they're going to do this with it. Like, it's one of those things where I guess, you know, as a screenplay, it's different than the movie that we have finally seen. We saw sure. the way Bill Paxton wanted to tell the story. Right. Mm-hmm. And the, right? Which I think, I mean, we talk about that a lot on this show, but I don't think we really, I don't know if we always really think about it in those, in those parameters. That there's a story and then there's how someone sees the story. Yeah. And a different director cool. could, yeah. you know, say like, well, we're going to yeah. do this all supernatural. I remember uh, famously yeah. um, Jacob's Ladder, if you've seen mm-hmm. that movie, apparently the script is like very descriptive of, you know, these supernatural visions. And it was the director who said like, no, 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 we're going to do it like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so the movie you're seeing is not the way that it was written. Yeah. Right. Know? And I will say, um, like I said, I did like initially start to read a few things about this movie and then stopped. One of the things that made me stop was... I saw um, Bill Paxton had initially planned, um, you know, we'll get into it. We talk about the movie, but there, like you said, there are visions in this movie. You know, there, mm-hmm. that's a big thing that these characters are based on, especially Bill Paxton's character. He sees these visions. Eventually in the movie, we do actually get to see the vision. Um, but originally Bill Paxton wanted to show everyone up front, like the very first body in the shed, like the woman, the nurse, mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. yeah. the first one, he wanted to show visions right away. Mm. James Cameron was the one that says, nope, don't do that. Don't give it all the way. That gives it away the he's whole like, movie. Don't give yeah. it away. He's like, don't yeah. give it away up front. Right now, your audience is in two camps, mm-hmm. yeah. and you got to keep them that way. <laughs> well, I suppose that's. I'm kind of surprised then that that was even a thing that he was considering. I, I am too, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, because now that you've seen it, you're like, well, how would you even have kept this going if you right. if you did if you did it's that right? A, off it's the not bed. a suspense if you do that. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. There's okay. no mystery to the movie, right. yeah. If you give that away so early on, yeah. yeah. But I suppose that's also the benefit of having James Cameron as a friend. You can go like, uh, Jim, how yeah. would you right. do? You know, like this. I'm thinking about doing this. You know, yeah. like what do you, what do you think? Um, well, Bill, that's I a bad guess idea. He also <laughs> had uh, I read a lot uh, some help from um, Stephen King. Yeah. In the promo, did you read about that? Um, I I briefly saw that um that he had. He had spoke with Stephen King in some regard. Again, I skimmed research and decided to stop reading. The so. way that I read it, it was, you know, he after he had finished the movie, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? It became like one of those things that was like all the studios turned it down. So then you have to go to the producers, right? right. The star producers who yeah. pick it up and then they have to try and get it set up at like a mini major like Lionsgate. Yeah. Put this out. Get big names attached to it. Yeah. And <laughs> Bill Paxton saying the fact that he got McConaughey was the re- yeah. it's like, OK, now it's McConaughey and me in a movie, yeah. you know, and that that gets a certain amount of budget, you know, yeah. so you can actually make this happen. But he said uh, there was a screening, uh, like a test screening 
for critics. And the critics saw the movie, I guess, in a way that was like um, morally questionable about the treatment of children. Like that was the thing that they responded to and were like, this is, you know, uh, a kind of not a nuclear thing, but, you know, like this is, you know, a thing about this movie. Mm -hmm. And so Paxton was like, you know, am I doing it wrong? Or like, what? Like, that's not what we intended, you know? And, and, Mm -hmm. and, and I think it was Cameron was like, no, it's, you know, that's just them overreacting. Right. And so what he did was he was like, you know, they need an endorsement for like, from a horror guy. Right. You know, say, Mm -hmm. no, it's a horror movie. Right. Right. You know, cause it's a realistic movie. I guess maybe that's the reason why it would become more of like a a touch point because it Mm -hmm. feels very real and that's to its credit. Yeah. Um. And so he wrote to Stephen King and was like, you know, hey, can you say something about it? And he said it took a couple of weeks and he got, you know, Big Steve's endorsement <laughs> on the movie. And, I hope you know, that's got, the stamp that Stephen King puts on it when he endorses it. He literally has a rubber stamp that says Big Steve's endorsement. Yeah. Approved by Big, <laughs> approved King by said Big yeah. Steve. Edge of your yeah. seat. Edge inter- of the seat entertainment. <laughs> how how little that w- his words have come to mean over the years. I was thinking that too. You know, 20 like, years ago, that was probably like, oh, I had some credibility yeah. to like it. Stephen he was the horror guy. Yeah. yeah. Like Stephen King also raved about claws on, on USA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stephen King, uh, you just give him free tickets to your movie and he'll give you a good endorsement right. for it at this point. Yeah. That's not a horror. That's a show about a nail salon. Oh, yep. yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh. Yeah. I was like, what? I was like, Colin doesn't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know it's, it's a show about, about yeah. a nail salon. <laughs> yep. But it's like a like a drama. I don't know. I've never yeah. watched it. Yeah. And that's what Stephen King is Apparently uh, he loves whittling him. away. The... Apparently it's his guilty pleasure. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So Frailty, I guess you would say, is a movie that... Um, I don't even know how many layers there are going on here. And I guess this is where we got to start, you know, spoiler (laughs) warning, right? From, from this point out. So if you want to go watch the movie, come back to uh, this, this time code, but it's a movie that, um, cause I have seen it before. Sure. And so tonight I was watching it knowing where it's going and seeing all the setup for it, Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. know, which when you're watching it, you know, cause now I'm watching what he's doing and I'm like, wow, this is the writer. This is, Mm -hmm. uh, Brett, um, Handley. Yeah. Yes. What was his name on there? I think so. Cause I looked him up. I think he's only done like three other things. Really? Yeah. That's kind of a shame. (laughs) Right, you're surprised by that yeah. after seeing this movie. Yeah, I am. Yeah. You're know, like, the phone should have been ringing. Yeah, right. It's Brent Hanley. Brent, Brent Hanley. Hanley. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think Paxton, uh, real quick, he he directed one other movie. Oh, yeah. Um, what was The I? Greatest Game uh, yeah, I Ever did, Played. Yeah, I did look that. Is that what it was? Greatest yeah. Game Ever Played? Yeah, yeah. Shia oh LaBeouf. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is his only full-length movie, and then he did an sh- uh, episode of Masters of Horror in a short, and that's it. The writer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What a bummer. Yeah, yeah. So this yeah. was his, this is what his legacy, right? right he, yeah. This is the idea that he had. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's gonna stick. He done did it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then in the movie itself, there's mm-hmm. two uh, narratives happening mm-hmm. at the right. same time: in the present and the past. Sure. Um, okay. So let's uh, let's get into this, and I guess we'll mm-hmm. have to. We're gonna talk about, I guess how the scene plays you know when we talk about this how it plays to you the first time you see it right but what's actually going on and how it it's setting this up okay. do we yeah we can do that okay we'll see how this mm-hmm. goes okay all right we'll do our so best. What, what is frailty about um frailty is about a well matt mcgana is, is our star he's he's the the narrator he's the one telling the story um he's telling it to powers booth who is an fbi agent who I love. Yeah, I I love to see I Powers, love Booth. Powers Booth. Yeah, <laughs> I know because now we're saying both Bill Paxton and Powers Booth have passed away, unfortunately, mm-hmm. at this point have, in time. But yeah, uh, native uh, Texans. All, all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Of them yeah. Not filmed in Texas, though. This movie shot in California. Of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe you want to watch yeah. Sin City again after seeing him. Forgot yeah. how good he was in Sin City. Yeah. <laughs> see, I am a fucking sucker for Tombstone. I will yeah, watch that. that too. I will watch that all day, every day. I love that movie. Do you guys think so Sean much. ever finished Tombstone? I doubt it. We got okay. Yeah, next right, week yeah. we'll check back in on Tombstone. Watch <laughs> at this at this point. I don't want to know. 
<laughs> I don't yeah. want to know. You was he going doing, like ten minutes at a time? Or yeah, he a disservice. Yeah, like, for those who don't remember where we were on last episode of Tombstone Watch, uh, Sean <laughs> uh, told us he was going to watch it, and six hours went by, and Holly asked how he liked it, and he was only a third of the way through it because yeah. he kept stopping it every ten minutes yeah. to do something. I don't else. know how and you do that with Tombstone. That was a number of months ago. So this was I'm I'm thinking this might have been a year or so ago. This was a it was while during ago. the pandemic. Yeah. Was it when we were recording when we remotely? Were quarantined. I think it was. Oh, God, I think you're right. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Wow, this saga has been going on for a while. Yeah. Will and Sean ever finish Tombstone? Yeah. Find out next week. <laughs> I mean, at this point, like, he's just doing himself a disservice. Well, now he's going to, it's been so long, he's going to have to start it all over oh, again yeah. now. Which, I mean, <laughs> go for it. I know, right? Because yeah. he's got power spoofing yeah. it. Powers Booth. fucking awesome. He's always going to be uh, the guy from Red Dawn for me, I guess. Oh, that's yeah. A, you know, where, like, I but mean, sure. But extreme to, prejudice. But to me, know? he's always going to be Curly Bell. Yeah. For uh, the well, rest yeah. of my life. <laughs> right. For the rest of my life. I love it so much. So he's a FBI agent who comes right. uh, back to the office one dark and stormy night. I love the atmosphere. Yeah. I love it. Uh, he, there's a lot to a lot of it. The, like the movie. There is, yeah. Because yeah. even, you know, like in the movie's sets, a whole mood, as they say. <laughs> There's like this lived in, like the way that they designed even like the family's farmhouse set, mm -hmm. like looks period appropriate and has that kind of atmosphere of like, you know, I mean, it just feels uh, not overly stylized. Feels you know? lived in. Yeah. It natural. Does. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, I, uh, I initially honestly thought when I first saw this movie that that was like they went and shot in an actual farmhouse. Mm -hmm. No, of course, you know, uh, Hollywood doesn't do anything for real. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a it's a set. But um. So late at night, on a dark and stormy night, mm -hmm. he comes back to the office and there is a man in his office, this is Matthew McConaughey, who says he knows who the God's Hands killer is. Right. Because apparently there has been a rash of serial killings. Mm -hmm. um, I think six victims so far. Right. Right. And they found one body and the rest just had a note. Yep. Okay. Is that key? I think it is. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. So this initial scene kind of plays like in hindsight, there's something going on there. Matthew McConaughey's character is very um, laid back, unfazed by, mm -hmm. you know, being yeah. in this situation. He's like, I'm basically. He's, he's like numb. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So is that how it plays? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But knowing what's happening, you know, it's like, okay, so he's. This is like he's laying a trap, right? Right. This mm -hmm. is him sitting there going like, okay, let's see. You know, but he's also on a mission. <laughs> yes. And kind of knows like what uh, what the outcome is going to be also. Doing. Right. Yeah. He has a plan. He knows exactly what he's doing. Why steal the ambulance? So he, he has arrived in a stolen ambulance. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Does he have his brother's body in the ambulance? No, he already buried it. Okay, and then yeah. he took the ambulance from there. This is the story that he's going to tell. Basically, he yeah. knows the killer is his brother, uh -huh. and he has killed his brother because his brother called and confessed to him. And so he buried him in a rose garden in Thurman, Texas. Well, no, at this point, the brother, we think, or the story that we're hearing is the brother has killed himself. Oh, killed mm -hmm. himself. Yes. Right, right, right. Sorry, yeah. we're hearing The story we're hearing is the brother has killed himself, and according to some pact... He has promised to bury his body in this rose garden where they grew up. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Yeah. The two brothers are Fenton and Adam. Yes. And Matthew McConaughey says he is Fenton. I can't. Meeks. Right. Yes. This is their Meeks. last name. Yeah. And so he's come to basically tell law enforcement. Yeah. Okay. He's like, but I know who the God killer or the no, God the God hand, hand killer. Yeah. God's hand killer. Not yeah. The God killer. That's that that's the that uh drive angry the god killer gun right yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the god killer yeah and, yeah and wonder woman yeah, yeah. anyway <laughs> but the scene where they're introduced right yeah. where powers booth comes in yeah um he offers to shake his hand and it turns out matthew mcconaughey is looking at a picture of powers booth and his mother yeah and he makes a mention about like is this your mom in the picture with you and then hands it to him and they don't actually shake hands mm -hmm. right and they're like that's one of those things that, like, I saw, uh, what was it, Serenity, mm -hmm. the Matthew McConaughey movie, and I'm like, ooh, there's something going on here, right? You're like, comparing this to Serenity. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're doing right now? Uh, well, it has Matthew McConaughey <laughs> And it has a twist. <laughs> yeah, and it has a twist. <laughs> you take that back. <laughs> okay, so where, where? And it has killer children? Question. Yeah, no, yeah, they, yeah. they both have killer oh. children. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, there's killer children in this movie. This is a shared universe That's between right. serenity and frailty. Um, okay, so uh, then who's Bill Paxton? Bill Paxton is Fenton and Adam's dad. Actor and director Actor of this and movie. That's he, right. He's That's right. on screen a lot. Yes, he's got a lot of screen time in this. Which I think, you know, to direct anything your first time at bat is difficult enough as it is, right. but to also have to, you know, do a performance and direct the actors you're in scenes right. with is, you know, kind of uh, impressive. I think so. I think it's a big undertaking for a first yeah. movie. How do you think he did? I think he did really well. Yeah, I think so too. I, I think the cinematography is, and lighting in this movie is really cool, actually, mm-hmm. and re- like really stylized in a way I like. Like early on, is uh, we see. Is it? I don't remember who it is, but someone's. We see the inside of a barn, and the it's lights Bill coming Paxton through. Is when it? He finds the axe. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're the, in the inside of the barn, and there's light coming through, like towards the the viewer's point of view of the slats of the barn, and you just see his silhouette like come through and yeah. block out the light from the slats, and we follow him all the way around the edge of the barn till he comes in, and like there's so much cool like silhouetting like that. Then when Matthew McConaughey and Powers Booth are driving in the car, like. They're clearly going by streetlights or something, but like, so their face will go from being fully lit to half lit yeah. back and forth in a way that was really interesting. I, I like yeah. that too. Mm-hmm. I was kind of fascinated mm-hmm. by that part. Yeah. It has better than average uh, cinematography. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it turns out that's Bill Butler. Bill Butler shot Jaws. Bill Butler oh. shot Grease. There we go. Wow. Bill Butler has a, yeah. He's Icon. Like, yeah. Uh, that Paxson said, you know, it's like, well, we'll try Bill Butler. And he said, yes. We'll <laughs> try. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like, we'll try to get him. Yeah. 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 Like, it's a long shot, but we'll yeah. try. Well, Man, I guess, you know what? He's got I mean, all the connections, Bill Paxson. Huh? Everybody loves him, apparently. I would do, yeah. I mean, what? If I were in Hollywood, yeah. But I think that it's also part of the the screen appeal of Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton always kind of has like an easygoing kind of right. way about him or something. He has a charisma of a movie star. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think like, well, I mean, I mean, he was a movie star. He led Twister. Mm-hmm. He led Mighty Joe Young. Mm-hmm. Uh, I keep saying those movies because, yeah. but I'm like, what uh, um, leading role, Bill Paxton? But he, um, he was. Apollo 13. He was one of the. Yeah. 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 Tombstone, come on. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, series lead on Big Love. He was. Oh, right, I forgot right, about yeah. that. Yeah. I fucking loved that show. You yeah. know I loved that yeah, show. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's, it's my jam. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mormon cults. Hell yeah. 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 <laughs> it's unfortunate. He was 67, I think, when he mm-hmm. passed away. Yeah. Um, so, so the initial scenes of uh, Bill Paxton interacting with these kids, um, I think, are. Uh, one of those things where you have to kind of knowing where the story is going, mm-hmm. you kind of have to set up like, well, he's a cool dad or I don't know, cool. Well, no, the way they set up, um, like when we first get introduced to the, to the family in flashbacks, um, you know, he's just a single dad raising two boys. Um, but like, they seem like a good little unit of a family and like, you know, they do their best. They help each other, you mm-hmm. know, and it just seems kind of like wholesome and, and nice, and they just eat peas, and it's great. Right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> just your average American it's, it's family. It's a nice time. <laughs> yeah. And they they have, like, a nice rapport. You get the yeah. idea that, like, he... Like, I have no doubts that these three love each other. Yeah. They're a loving, supportive unit of a family. I think that's why you have to have those opening scenes. And, I mean, yeah. even later on, it's like, it still seems like he's, you know, dare I say, a decent guy uh, on <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the way that he no, I know, he yeah. talks to his kids until like his uh, sense of uh, discipline or whatever uh, gets out of hand. Uh- <laughs> yeah, it, like it's it, it's very comp. I, I think he does a really good job playing this part because it's very complicated because you can see how incredibly conflicted he is. Mm-hmm. You know, like he's not. There are moments when you're like, there is a good guy in this person somewhere and he has existed there but there's also this insane religious mission that's taking over and but you can see like these moments come through where he's like where he's loving dad yeah and then next minute he's crazy religious guy (laughs) but what's so scary is how seamlessly he shifts between the two you know it's not like this is like a possession that's taken a hold of him it is like his delivery is so calm and normal saying the craziest shit that that's what makes it so much more disturbing i i have to assume that people at hbo saw this movie and they're like bill paxton's doing big love Mm -hmm. (laughs) i have to assume because it's just it's 
Yeah, I can see it. Right. It segued right into that show. <laughs> well, your your in, your impression of his character, and that's one of the great things about the movie. That's why it's probably like a two watch movie. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's like the first time through. I think you bring your own kind of like, okay, well, I live in reality, and, right? You know. Yeah. But the second time around, once we know what's going on at the end, right. the second time around, he plays. I mean, it it still plays, but he he is like desperate dad yeah trying right. his best to you know yes. right. reach his kid <laughs> and it's like no it's it's true mm-hmm. you know yeah um okay so what uh, i think what makes that so interesting is if you know anything about like crazy religious like circumstances and and people and stuff like that shit is real like mm-hmm. people really do get so sucked into their beliefs that they are like the, they're struggling with their parenting because because yeah. they believe in their faith so much that it's that's why it's so scary right like I it's like in the movie you know we're we're watching this thinking like oh the supernatural stuff's not real so this is just a crazy dad and that shit happens mm-hmm. it's scary as fuck mm-hmm. does a movie like this though like uh, empower that kind of thinking I suppose you know, that's what I always wonder about it's like you know when I watch it it's like okay they're trying to make a horror movie sure right? yeah. yeah you know I mean so the effect is that you know at the end it's like yeah it turns out supernatural is actually real right i mean that's how all horror movies end up but would it have been more terrifying if they went the true crime way and you never actually knew you know if it played it you know because i like i guess what i'm you know uh the way that we get into this situate dad has a vision right mm-hmm. right normal everyday dad yeah. just all their, of a sudden just had their peas went to bed all yep. good yeah and then his bowling trophy lights up <laughs> yeah oh yeah i forgot yeah. about that uh that was pretty but funny that's, that's like a cool interpretation <laughs> visual interpretation of how to show an angel visiting you it's not right. oral roberts and like an angel showed right. up in my bedroom <laughs> right. right it's just because we see the flashback, I guess, and it's just basically right. like the the light from the it's in the dark in his bedroom, yeah. and the light on a, 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 a trophy. trophy starts glowing. And like you were saying, like you know, we go into this thinking logically that it's not real. And my first thought, because I'm looking at his bed, I see there's a window. I'm like, okay, that is a car headlight yeah. reflecting yeah. on his trophy, and that's what's happening right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But mm-hmm. then. Because when I first saw this, the first time I saw it in the theater, I don't know if you also had the same experience, but Kayla, it was uh, like I I saw that as a visual representation of a guy having a stroke. Yeah. You know? Oh, I could see that. Yeah. yeah. Or something where I was like, oh, this, you know, it's like they're because they're cheating it. They're like saying, like, here's the supernatural thing that he's seeing. Right. And we're going to show you what it is. But all it really is, is like. Because they cut to a shot of him, yeah. and there's no light on him. Right. So we're like, okay, objective reality is a shot on him, and there's no big glowing, you know, right. whatever. Yeah. No, I'm with <laughs> you, because at this point, I was, like, the way he just, like, instantly switched, I was like, okay, I think this guy must have a brain tumor. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the yeah. next place that yes. you go, right? Yeah. I guess even the kid, like, brings this up, because he's like, I think maybe you're not right in the head, is yeah. like, yeah. the, the childish way of saying... You know, you maybe have a medical you had a, or, <laughs> or you had a mental break. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have psychosis happening. What does dad? Uh, uh, what did the angel tell dad? Oh, um, well, their family has been chosen. Their mission is to destroy demons. Yeah, because there's actual demons on Earth and the actual apocalypse demons, is yep. being fought right now. The judgment is happening. Mm hmm. And their mission is to destroy demons. There will be three, and there will be three weapons. There will be three weapons given to them, and a list of names will be provided. It's There's always in sevens. Seven. That's it a seems biblical like, thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. There's a lot of sevens in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's, it's, it's weird. Seven right, seals, right. seven, all that <laughs> bullshit, yeah. Um, so... But the the way that the, I guess this is the, the, the strength of the movie, right? It's like, it's going to play this from the perspective of the oldest boy, Fenton, Mm -hmm. Fenton, you know? And I always think that this is a pretty good way to like, cause this is, if you're making a horror movie, you scare the audience, you scare the kid, you scare the audience, right? The audience identifies with the kid. And so then they feel the fear. Otherwise, you know, if it was from Matthew McConaughey's point of view, or if it was from Bill Paxton's point of view, it'd be less disturbing, Mm -hmm. but it's disturbing because it's a kid and he's at the age where he's kind of aware 
of, right. uh, you know, he right. knows Santa Claus isn't real kind of thing. Yeah, he right. knows right and wrong. Yes. Yeah. But the younger kid doesn't, maybe. Mm-hmm. He and just s- knows dad's right. Okay. Yeah. This is how we read it when we first go through it. There is visual cues the second time when you watch it. That's mm-hmm. like, oh, the kid is actually experiencing these visions at the same time. Like right. he's reacting the same way. Uh-huh. But the Fenton, young Fenton is not uh-huh. uh, in all of these like right. shots. But it's weird they do it in a wide shot, but they don't do it in the close ups. In yeah. the close ups, the kid doesn't read like, oh, my God, I'm seeing something horrible. But in the wides, he's reacting exactly the same mm-hmm. as, right. as dad does. Um, but I I did notice that as we were watching it, but I also wondered if he was just reacting to his dad's reaction. Right? Yeah, I thought you know? that too. Because, you know, Bill Paxton, he's putting his hand on this demon, so to speak, who is just a person, but, you know, demon. And he puts his hand on it, and he's like supposedly seeing this vision where he's like convulsing and yeah. like shaking. And if I saw my dad doing that as a child, I'd be freaking losing my mind. Right. So I thought he was reacting to that. Yeah. Well, it's cool that it can read, you know, both yeah, ways. Yeah, right. Sure. Yeah. Um, there's, because uh, I guess the idea being, well, one of the magical things that they're given is an axe. <laughs> um, oh, oh, named Otis. Oh, this scene is, I'm sorry, it's a little, it's too hilarious to it's like funny. pass up because like they're it's driving really in the country. They see a barn where like there's one beam of light shining down on this barn mm-hmm. and they stop and they go in like the it beam, is, the, it is like sword in the stone it is shed. comical <laughs> like the beam on the barn was already funny but then when he walks in the barn and you see the beam shining on this axe stuck in a stump yeah. like and that's the only thing in the barn yeah. that this light is touching that yeah the axe named otis, otis. Yep. and there is a pair of gloves that seems to baffle bill paxton somehow i'm like why the gloves? how are you an adult man getting through life and you don't know why someone would wear work gloves right like you, you, I, but it turns out they're magical that you wear the gloves when you grab the demon because if you touch the demon with your bare hands you're going to be psychically overwhelmed with their evil right right, you know? right. And not at all because when you wield a wax, you, uh, a nap, right. you, yeah. should, you should wear gloves. Yeah. yeah, not that's not why. No, Demons, it's not basic obviously. safety gear or anything. Right. Yeah. And the third magical weapon is a oh, pipe. A lead pipe, pipe because it's the game clue. Yep. <laughs> lead pipe. I, that's where I was like, this guy's really reaching here. Like the right. axe, the axe, I could believe because, like, first of all, that's a pretty majestic weapan, right? Like an axe is an axe, like, it's pretty, yeah. yeah. Compared to a lead pipe, like that's some hood rat, like, like Grand Theft Auto shit, right? you know. And it's like, it's not that I wanted this movie to be longer or anything, but in my mind, I was like, okay. It's, I loved the scene of him finding the axe. I want to know how he found this fucking pipe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I want don't that get to see scene. that. So is I the, want that scene. Are the gloves just the second quote unquote weapon then? What's the because there's supposed to be three, right? Yeah, yeah. I guess. It has it's to be the weapon. gloves, right? I think it because I think maybe he said if you if you grab them with the magical gloves, it yeah. renders the demons like uh okay. harmless. So you can actually yes. you gotta grab them with the gloves. And he adapts his mythology your, your to what he finds. But <laughs> that's what it sounds like. And yeah. that's how you're, but, as the audience, you're supposed to be yeah. hearing this. And right. like, truthfully, if that's, the, if that's the, the lore behind it, at the very last scene, it does happen. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. yeah right. right. Yeah. It does. Yeah. yeah. Because they're, okay. So, I mean, yeah. And they handle this, like, the way that the, the brothers are trying to, deal with this is like yeah. is dad going crazy number one fenton says yes mm-hmm. the kid says no he's not and the kid or sorry adam the younger one mm-hmm. is like uh you know i'm gonna i'm helping out as best i can yeah. we're, we're yeah. superheroes he's you know? like all in right away yeah he's and like- he brings his own list <laughs> yeah oh my that was table. fucked up but hilarious <laughs> <laughs> the way the way he like so gently handled it like it's, yeah i was like he has a kill list and you're just like, it's okay, son. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. It was a very leave it to beaver moment about something like right. very dark. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Mr. Brady. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> what yeah. The fuck? Right. I know it's a pretty dark movie. It yeah. is. It is. And like, there was times where obviously it felt a lot like Dexter, but there was also a little bit of like reverse Dexter because yeah. early on in the movie, it's like the dad is the unhinged killer and Fenton is like the conscience trying to like yeah. talk him out of it. And I was like, oh, seeing reverse Dexter is really weird. Yeah. yeah. And Fenton, uh, we're saying he's narrating yep. this movie um, because the, the other plot is like um, uh, older Fenton, Matthew McConaughey. Mm-hmm lures or whatever 
uh, says it basically like the yeah. only way, you know, we've been burying these bodies out in the Rose Garden. I've got proof. And so there's this long 200 mile drive yeah. uh, in the His dark in the rain. like, all right, well, I'll bite. Show yeah. me where the bodies are. And so we hear the 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 you know, the inner workings of Fenton, although when we're later on, you know, it's uh, I mean, I guess because we're saying there's a narrator, there's an unreliable narrator, the Hitchcock, uh, you know, uh, right. device. Where you, you don't know if you, you're only getting it from one perspective. Right. Uh, so maybe some of these details are not historically accurate. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I mean, he's clearly been through some shit. So we have to assume like, OK, if he's telling the truth. He's got to be fucked up from this in some way. So like what? And, you know, there's even moments when Powers Booth is like, I can tell you're hiding something. Keep talking. I'll figure out what it is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, some of the, well, it's like, man, I want to, I want to talk about some of the stuff that, ha- that, we're, we're, that you think about after the fact that you've seen it, but we still have to kind of yeah. explain what that is. <laughs> so basically the family, since they're going to kill these demons that right. only they can see, this is what God has promised that you're going to be able to see these demons. They live among us, mm-hmm. right? God makes you invisible when you go on his missions. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's because it, it reads as this kind of blind faith, right? Mm-hmm. Like he just has Paxton has so much commitment to the idea. It's just it's complete blind faith that this is going on. Um, but later, you know, when Matthew McConaughey at one point says, like, well, I believe the whole time. It's like, well, you didn't really have to believe you saw stuff that, you know, I mean, if, if you're seeing it, uh, it's there, right. <laughs> you know, Um so they they set out to lure and kill uh, several people. Uh, we're seeing this from Fenton's point of view, mm-hmm. where it's like, you know, these are people, Dad. You know, we can't just go around killing people. And the argument being, they're not really people; they're demons. How? So, in your under your understanding of the movie, like, what's a demon in this? Yeah, I was a little fuzzy on that. Um... I wasn't quite sure what he meant by demon at first because, you know, the way he was saying was, you know, these these are demons that we have to kill. But then he would talk about, like, seeing the sins of the person. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, does he know what a demon is? Because that's not really... That's not really what it is. It kind of just seems like he's killing bad people. Right. Like Dexter. Yeah. 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 Well, that's totally the way I took it. Yeah. But yeah. The way it's explained to us is like a demon, you know, I, you know, you see like well, a demon takes possession of a person and makes them commit evil deeds or something mm-hmm. like that. But it doesn't play no, like that. And this, just, no. Yeah. And they definitely like hit home the message of like free will during this movie. Mm hmm. You know, there's God even, can't make you do anything, yeah, Davy. God can't make you do anything. Yeah, mm-hmm. little episode of Davy and Goliath. Yeah, that shows up in there. <laughs> um, but yeah, because it does seem to be like Dexter. It's mm-hmm. like we're, you know, they're targeting the bad people, someone yeah. who has sinned mm-hmm. and has hidden that sin and got away with it. Yeah, but God saw it, and so if you lay God's hands upon them, their sin will be revealed. Now we kill them with the axe. Mm-hmm. Right, um, Fenton. Yeah, is but still, like, you're just killing people who have sinned and that doesn't really jive right yeah as mm-hmm. demons i get you know right, sure. you get right angels and demons angels show up in this movie i guess that's the most like overt vision that was pretty cool it looked pretty cool i thought it's like that was pretty cool yeah. yeah because it's like he he's a mechanic mm-hmm. and at some point he gets he wheels underneath like a car to fix it mm-hmm. yeah and even that scene to me read as like Brain tumor. Brain tumor. <laughs> yeah. Why? I thought I was like, is there carbon monoxide or some yeah. shit happening? Because he's under a car. So like, who knows what he's breathing in? And there's sparks flying yeah, really close to his face. And there's like loud noises. So yeah. Like the vision that he sees correlates with what he's experiencing around him. Right. Like the flame, the flames yeah. and like the sword and stuff. Yeah. The noise and all that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the movie even, and I guess it always does do like an, a, a, an objective shot of him. Yeah. Uh, in all of his visions, I think mm-hmm. you always get like a shot of his face or whatever. Yeah. Right. And you do in this, right? You see like him lying on the ground looking up going, oh, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. and then you see his subjective point of view, which is this angel with a fiery mm-hmm. sword coming up. But this is the only scene that I can remember. It gave you like a second 
objective point of view from like a distance where it's like mm-hmm. there's no sound just the sound of like clanging or whatever right. and yeah. you see him just laying underneath the car this is what yeah. like his co-workers would see right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of funny yeah <laughs> it's just yeah. a guy underneath the car yeah. just staring yeah but he's seeing this angel yeah. swoop down on him and you're like okay is he crazy right the movie has a lot of fun with this <laughs> uh, I mean, it's pretty clever. Yeah, you know? I think so. Like right. keeping you like, is he crazy? Is he not? I mean, I guess when I first saw it, I was like, he's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you have these kids who are kind of dragged along into this situation of like, m- it's a psychological torture, I suppose. Oh, for sure. <laughs> because you've got one kid who's like all in on the, you know, we're killing demons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And witnessing murder. And the other one who's like, this is horribly wrong. Yeah. And he's witnessing murder and dad wants him to participate. So he goes to the sheriff. Yeah. And then. We I have- hated the sheriff. Yeah. I was so mad. Because he didn't believe the kid. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They never do. That no, it so doesn't mad. like some, so mad. something about watching movies where kids aren't being believed by adults really activate something in me. Like, yeah. I don't like it. Like, it just takes you back to when you were a kid and like you didn't get believed about something. You know, it's like. Obviously nothing this dark or insane, but like, you know, like it's, it's annoying when you're being gaslit by adults as a kid, you know? Yeah. And that one seemed egregious. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, that kid's believable. He's a pretty good actor. Yeah. Yeah. Good actor. I was a little worried about that child actor after this movie because, like that, especially that scene where he gets nailed in the in the basement. I was there in the cellar. I was yeah. like, the way that kid's acting was was a little too. I know. Oh man, it was a little upsetting. I thought. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good actor. He's a good actor. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that sometimes about like the most like egregious one I can think of is like Wes Craven's New Nightmare because yeah. that kid went through some stuff in that movie that mm-hmm. I'm like. You know, that seems like border on, yeah. you know, putting this kid through traumatic psychological stress. Absolutely. In this one, I was like, you know, obviously the situation is horrible, but mm-hmm. like the actual what the filming is. And then you're like, you know, at, at that age, kids do have this kind of like better understanding of fantasy. Yeah. They pretend all the time. Right. You know. And so uh, they pretend and then everybody laughs around on the set, you know, but when right. you see it, it's like, Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this is horrible. Why does yeah. the kid get locked in the in the basement? Um. So he goes. So um, the next demon they go to get Bill Paxton wants um, wants Fenton to do the deed. He wants him to to kill him and he doesn't want to. So he runs out of the cell, goes and gets the sheriff. Tries to tell on dad what he's doing. Sheriff comes back, um, brings him home. And, you know, sheriff's just like, all right, well, let's go check it out. And then, of course, when they get home, he's like, I want to talk to your dad. You know, mm-hmm. he doesn't actually believe him. Um, so they eventually do go down to the cellar. They're like, oh, well, do we need to check out the cellar? And so sheriff goes down there. Dad kills sheriff. And Fenton is now in trouble because dad doesn't trust him. Well, and now this is the first time that the dad is killing someone that's not like on the list or a demon. Right. Yeah. So th- this is like a self-defense kill, right? But yeah. See, he's even yeah. explaining that, right? Mm-hmm. He's got the like, you know, the, the God told me if you tell anyone, you know, because that's the whole thing. It's like, don't tell anyone what we're doing here. It's a secret. Right. If you do, someone innocent is going to die. Mm-hmm. Like it didn't say God didn't say that uh, dad's going to kill somebody. Right. You know, just that someone innocent is going to die. But sure enough. Yeah. Dad has to kill the sheriff. Uh, and apparently, you know, it's like not too horribly broken up about it because it's like still in pursuit of this mission. This had to be done. That's yeah. that's you know, kind of that's thing. religion for you, Colin. Always loopholes in the language. There always is a way out of everything they say. Like, yeah, that. Yep. yep, it's God's will. Yep, it is God's mm-hmm. will. But what if it actually is God's will? <laughs> what if? I mean, because that's where the movie is headed. Right. right? It's yeah. Like, yeah. It, the The movie is basically saying that all of it by the end of the movie, even though you the first time through are sitting there watching it as. You know, the audience. Yeah. By the end of the movie, it's like, no, all of this. Dad's actually 100 percent right. Mm -hmm. He saw God. God had a message for him. All the supernatural stuff is correct. Yep. He's trying to save his kid because the angel told him Mm -hmm. like Abraham. Right. Mm -hmm. One of your Mm -hmm. sons. Well, Abraham had to sacrifice his son. But, you know, it's like so in this situation, it's like one of your sons is a demon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and you're going to have to kill him. And Bill mm-hmm. Paxton's like, no, I'm not fucking killing my goddamn kid. I'm going to mm-hmm. prove that he's, right. you know, yeah. we're going to do some tough love on this kid and get him to see God. Mm-hmm. So they build a, he has him dig a hole in the backyard. And like, buy a hole. It's like the size of a basement. Yeah. yeah. Like, if they, he calls it a, a, when he takes the sheriff down, he calls it a storm cellar. Yeah. Which that's really what it is. Yep. Yeah. It locks a kid in there for weeks yep. until he sees God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that is probably like some of the toughest stuff, I suppose, you know, to watch. This is like an adult horror movie. Yeah, pretty much. Like what age you think you have to be to like appreciate this movie? The best? I mean, if, you know, the cutoff. You gotta be like 30. Yeah. Mm, I, th- I think it helps. Yeah, I think it helps. Yeah, I think it helps to be older to watch yeah. this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or you have to like have experience being around kids or something like that. The, you know, the, the decisions that sure people helps. have to make. Yeah. Just to-, to have like a full understanding of the complexities of the emotions in these characters. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I think if you're like, you know, younger, you'll see it as like, man, well, it's an OK movie. But as you're older, it's like, Jesus Christ, this is like, yeah. this is, <laughs> this is heavy horrible. Shit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is some horrible shit that's happening here. Uh, locks the kid in the basement. For weeks, nails with, the door shut. Yeah, yeah, and only giving him water. Yeah, and after seven days, he comes in. You seen God yet? And he's like, "There is no God." Mm-hmm. Nails it back shut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there is that whole thing of like when you're digging this hole, pray. You know, mm-hmm. the whole time you're doing it. Uh, and he's like, "I'm not going to pray at all." Mm-hmm. You know, because he's a demon. He mm-hmm. doesn't know it yeah. yet. But mm-hmm. it's like, what? Why, why is he a demon? See, that's the thing. Like, unclear. I'm, I'm very. No, it's clear. I'm very foggy on their definition of demon because mm-hmm. I don't think these people are demons. I think they're people that do really bad things. I don't think they're demons. I mean, if so you want to possess by de- unless if you they're saying go, like yeah, theologically, then yeah. It's if like, you want to go by like the constructs of the Bible, like a demon is a different thing. But they don't specifically say these people are like possessed by demons they're just they they are evil people they're just sin. People. they're just people yeah. at sin honestly yeah. like yeah. that's it means they're pretty bad sins, by, yeah. yeah 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 because we find out one guy was a child molester mm-hmm. one uh woman she killed uh, she was a nurse that killed a patient it looked like yeah, yeah. like slit his throat what the other guy do the, the guy is yelling at his wife like shut the fuck up or whatever. i mean he was just nasty anyway yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I can only imagine what he did. Mm-hmm. But they, of course, know these things about them. Um, Fenton gets locked down in this dungeon mm-hmm. and yeah. he sees God. Or does he? He says that he sees God, but when he comes out, he's like, I've seen what my destiny is. God showed me my destiny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And red flags are going off yeah. in the audience because, like, right. uh, uh, yeah, I bet, I bet we know what your destiny is. Right. Yeah. And so but she- I mean, like, I. Like I believe it. I, I mean, he went. He was locked in this cellar for how long without food, with barely any water, in the mm-hmm. dark. Like this is where he snapped. The, I mean, that that's the whole like crux of the movie is that this is where his dad created him as a yeah. demon. Yeah, his right. dad made him that way. Right. Yeah. That's the whole like. I know. Yeah. Because that's basically yeah. what they're saying. It's like the God knows in the future. He's going to be a serial killer, but yeah, the right. only reason that he's a serial because killer- of his fucking dad. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's a catch twenty two. Yeah, it's like how do you explain that one, God? Yep, you- and that is something I don't think people would really understand watching this as a young at a young age. Right, exactly. I don't think they would pick pick that up until they're older. Yeah. Well, it so turns out that yes, mm-hmm. indeed, the young Fenton. Next time that they're supposed to, well, I mean, like there's this whole moment of pride with Dad. Like, oh yeah. They're finally coming I'm along with for this. this. Yeah. yeah. But Fenton attacks Dad with Otis, the uh, the, the axe. Kills yep. him. And dad whispers something to Adam, which is probably what the demon told him. It's like, your brother is a, is a demon. Yeah. The demon told him. The angel told angel him. Told him yeah. um, and so that brings us into the present, basically, where McConaughey is leading uh, Powers Booth to this Rose Garden. Mm-hmm. Um, Powers Booth, not the smartest FBI agent in the world. Uh, maybe. In the middle of the night, you just take off with a <laughs> yeah. uh, guy. You Don't have any him. backup. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody runs any kind of... Because I was like sitting there going like, well, oh, okay, this is the leap of logic where this movie, you know, it's like, yeah. well, what are you going to do? The guy comes in and confesses this. You're going to hold him or whatever. And the right. next day, you know, a bunch of guys are going to go out there. Right. But Team no, it's out, like yeah. here in the middle of the night, we're going to go just you and me. We're going to go check this out. And then there's a shocking reveal as uh, we get into the... Uh, into the rose garden. Yeah, I I did like the moment in the car when, um, 
when Powers Booth says, and Adam never told anyone, and Matthew McConaughey was just like, I don't want to talk about this anymore. Mm -hmm. I liked that. There was another key moment, too, where Mm -hmm. uh, McConaughey keeps on asking. There's three times in the movie, I think, that he says... You know, something about your mom. Your mom, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's like, why is that, you know, the picture of you having your mom? This mm-hmm. is in the, in the car, and Powers Booth is because somebody killed my mom. Mm-hmm, Two yeah. days after that picture was, was taken, mm-hmm. and they got away with it. And McConaughey is asking these questions. Powers mm-hmm. Booth is like... You thought about being a cop? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And watching McConaughey's face and reaction in that uh, moment is, mm-hmm. you know, something like once you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It's like, oh, okay. I see what he's doing there. As an actor, it's like, okay, he knows mm-hmm. what the performance is. Um, so what do we find out in, in the Rose Garden once we actually get there? And sure enough, there are graves which makes me wonder what this place looks like during the day and how come nobody i know yeah just piles of dirt (laughs) everywhere and powers booth even says that's way more than six yeah yeah Yeah. but he's like uh fenton he's like well no fenton didn't bury him here fenton kept him for his trophies Mm -hmm. i buried the demons here yeah because the man in front of you is adam yeah Mm -hmm. (gasps) oh shit unreliable narrator bam yep okay so what we are to get then mm-hmm. is that Adam, uh, surv- you know, after the death of dad mm-hmm. and they went through foster services or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. the mission from God was passed on to him. Right. And so he's been off killing all of these people that show up on the list as the angel keeps on mm-hmm. giving him all this stuff. And there was a moment in the cellar when Fenton looks at Adam and he says, when when the time comes, bury me in the Rose Garden. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like Fenton knows, you know, mm-hmm. or he's just like, at some point, this guy's going to come, come and get he me. Knows, right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and Fenton, broken, broken man now because of the time in the yeah. cellar and <laughs> because of the stuff that he witnessed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And becomes a serial killer. That's Obviously. The, and now he kills people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no amount of therapy that could help you with that, I don't Ooh. think. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Therapists everywhere cringing as they're listening to that. But uh, they're hoping. Yeah, uh, no, I, we can I, you know what? Yeah, I hope I'm wrong about that. I hope I'm wrong, but I don't know that I am. Uh, I am. I'm too, I am too. <laughs> but I mean, it is the thing. Like we we don't know if uh, Fenton has been targeting. You know, is he is he Dexter? Is Fenton Dexter? I mean, we don't we don't know much about Fenton's victims right. at this point. We just know that he's. Killed a few people. One body was found. Notes were found for the other ones. And then they allude to the fact that he was leaving notes for Adam. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's the thing. The police think the notes are for them. For them. But it's the actually or whatever. No, it's he's for trying Adam. to attract Adam. So it's basically a suicidal thing. He's like, I want this to be over with. And so I'm going to get Adam to come. I'm tired of running. <laughs> yeah. But he's also the God's hand killer. He's the one who's public. I'm right. the God's hand killer, even though he's killing I think that means he is basically a Dexterish character trying to pick his victims That's right. and kill what them. I gathered from it, but again, we never really yeah. find out. But they were never actually people on God's list, right? Right. And so eventually, uh, Fenton gets on God's list, and uh, Adam yeah, has to go and kill him because he asked him what took him so long. He's like, he wasn't on my list yet. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Powers Booth. Turns out this whole movie has been basically a ploy mm-hmm. by Adam. That's Matthew McConaughey. Mm-hmm. Now that we now we got to call him Adam. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. Adam. Has been trying to get Powers Booth away from uh, civilization, mm-hmm. way out to the Rose Garden. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's already a grave dug for him. Why? Because he was the next on his list. Mm-hmm. Why? He killed his mom. Oh yep. my god. Yep. It is like Dexter where everybody's a serial killer in this universe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it's the end of the world. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Make I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. And the, yeah, good. It all we're, works. We're it all works. Yeah. It's been 20 yeah. years cuz yeah. that was 1979 to yep. 1991 or whatever, but um Powers Booth is like, you know, you're gonna get caught. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody saw you there with me. In the, you went to the FBI mm-hmm. building, right? No, Colin, God will protect him. But how? Because God makes him invisible. Scramble that CCTV mm-hmm. footage. Yeah, just over the face. Everything else is yep. there. How, scramble but that then face. The, but then the one cop actually saw him, and you, we see him in the next scene. He's like, "I looked right at him. I can't, I don't know what he looked like. It's all a blur." Yeah. Yep. 
he's fogged in in the guy's mm-hmm, memory yeah. even. And I'm like, does he remember what he sounds like? Because Matthew McConaughey sounds very, uh, you know, he's got a distinctive. We all know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, but apparently not. That's also no. fogged. He knows that he was there. So there is those kind of, I like that the movie did this because they're kind of perfunctory, but it's like the scenes where, you know, the FBI is going to raid Fenton's house or whatever, because mm-hmm. they are filling, uh, 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 going through the motions of finalizing that storyline. Right. The the God's Hand Killer, because how do you tie all this up, right? So basically, if uh, Adam has gone and just kind of abducted and killed the lead investigator on the case, how do you smooth that over? You know, how, a guy just can't disappear. That's because he was the last victim right. of the God's right. Hand Killer. Mm-hmm. You know, it's thought of everything. Yep. And it is his wallet and put him on the list and, yeah. Yeah. But then, so the FBI is like, well, probably got to go tell this guy's brother, Adam, that uh, that uh, his brother's a serial killer. I suppose that's what the FBI guy is going to. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, he's going to tell him that his brother's a serial killer. <laughs> Can you imagine seeing the cops come up and you think they're just going to tell you the standard like your brother died or whatever, right? That they come up to you and they're like, it's worse than that. Yeah. <laughs> he's a serial killer. Like, Is there a worse cop visit you could get? I this mean, is going to be all good. over the news, yeah. too. Like, uh, it's going to be like, an, like you're gonna be, your brother's going to be nationally famous for this. Yeah. yeah. We have a nickname for him. Yeah. Well, I guess we've spoiled it, but that's yeah. where the audience finds out that, like, Adam is the sheriff. Mm-hmm. Of meat. Of, is it, was it meat? Meat. Meat. What was it? No, it's the, meat. What was the Rose meat, Garden? Texas. That was in Thurman, wasn't Thurman. it? Thurman. Yeah. Yeah. Was it a, but it was something else, county? Okay, well, no. but he did say something like meat, meat Texas. Yeah, meat, Texas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, he's the sheriff. He's the sheriff, and the, the FBI agent doesn't remember meeting him. And nope. so, you know, it's like basically, because I was thinking originally, because I think that ending did kind of take me by surprise when I mm-hmm. first saw this uh, in 2001. I was like, oh, he's the sheriff, too. Because when the FBI guy goes into the office, I was like, what's he here for? Right. You know, he's here. I guess he's following up in some way. And the way um, it's well, shot with the- him coming out of the back office is really cool reveal, too. Yeah. Well, he's what- like in shadow until yeah. he gets behind the counter, basically. Um, and he's of- got that pose, too. He yeah. is like he is like the warrior, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. God's well, Avenger. They, they also they set it up that um, he stole the ambulance earlier in the movie. So you have to think that he's there to like question them about the stolen ambulance and if they have any footage of that and that and any information about the guy that took it because he knows that's the guy, right? Well, they know they found, I mean, they haven't found Fenton himself, but they found like the trophies, I guess is what they say in the basement, right? And they know that this is the guy. Are they still looking for Fenton? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, from the movie's internal logic, right? It's like, if he's not there, do they know where he is? Or are they mm-hmm. just, maybe they're coming to the sheriff to find out, you know, where he is. Oh, yeah, because they he says to Matthew McConaughey, he's like, if you hear from him, mm-hmm. yeah, they're looking for him. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be a manhunt. It's yeah. going to be all over the news. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. But talking about that ambulance thing. So this is something that, you know. Later on, you're like, oh, he even thought about covering his tracks there, right? Because part of the reason that Powers Booth actually gets in the car with him is because he calls the sheriff's office Mm -hmm. to check about this guy, Fenton, who's supposedly sitting in front of him. But how does, what's the, how's the plan work that they uh, actually get the story to check out? Um, Is it Becky? Yeah. The the receptionist or call um, operator, whatever. I don't know. Um, she confirms that that Adam took the or that or Fenton, Fenton that Fenton took, took the, yeah. the ambulance, and we find out that that's actually Adam's wife. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. Okay, so she's in on it. So she provided yep. cover to make this yep. happen, and she's got a bun in the oven. So there's another one coming. And at the end, when she asks him, like, you know, how did it? How did it go? Basically, I was reading that as the like, okay, are we clear? Right. Yeah. Is everything good? You know, we've you know undetected. Right. Uh, and he says it all went according to God's plan. And her answer is 
God is great or something like that. It was like, and I was like, okay, so she is yep. like, they're raising the next generation of like, yep, you know, yep. the warriors. Of demon slayers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a superhero movie. You look at <laughs> second time around. <laughs> it's, sure. like, it's like supernatural, basically. I, I was like, yeah. I get a lot of supernatural vibes. Yeah, yeah, same. Yeah. So, I mean, is it, uh, you know, I mean, there's going to be people who are listening who are, you know, uh, you know, is it a horror movie? I think so. I think so. Yeah. I mean, it's not it, very yeah. gory. It's Don't not, expect it, blood or anything. It's not gory. It's not that kind of movie, but it's horrifying. And not like jump scares. No. You know? No. No. It's just morally psychologically mm-hmm. like it's a psychological it's a crime yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah okay well all right well we've talked at length about the movie but the question that you're all asking is whether or not we'd recommend it to you and in order to answer that question first of all we're gonna have to uh you're gonna have to pay attention after we read mm-hmm. some of your mail in order to do that we're gonna have to summon our mailman and his name is igor bring us the mail Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Oh, he responded to your clap, Holly. Good. I wasn't sure does. if uh, yeah. you know, what the, you know, Sean said his clap was yeah, special. Well, so. Sean thinks he's special. Yeah. <laughs> Who does he think raises and feeds Igor? <laughs> right. Come it's on. not Sean. <laughs> it's not Sean. <laughs> well. He lets the litter box go for so long it's before so scooping long. it. <laughs> so long. Uh, and the weirder thing is that it's in my. he lives in my basement, yeah, but, but Sean's Sh- in Sean's charge. on litter box duty. He knows that. That's right. Yeah. We all have our chores around the basement. Sean's yeah, and who box. ends up doing it? Me. Yeah, every yeah. time. <laughs> every time. Oh. Now it's part of uh, Saturday Night Freak Show canon. <laughs> um, okay. He wanted that puppy so yeah. goddamn bad. <laughs> it's on the chore chart. He oh, knows I'm what Daisy's supposed to do. It. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much, Igor. We all appreciate your hard work. Um, so, in order, we want you to participate in this interactive portion of our show. Yes, please. You can do that by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. And about uh, tonight's movie, MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, mm-hmm. right wants us to know that uh, the actor who played young Fenton, we probably should have brought this up during the show, yeah. but uh, his name is Matt O'Leary. Matt O'Leary, yeah. I think this was his first movie, movie I think. Would it surprise you to know that you've seen him before Haven't. in two other movies that were featured on the Saturday Night Freak Show? What? Yeah. He's added to the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame because well, he was- good for him. He's congratulations. a good actor. Yeah. He was in Brick. You remember oh, Brick? Brick. Yeah. He was Don't the brain. That. The brain in Brick. Ryan Johnson's oh. first movie. And he was also all. in Time, which I uh, think was- Yeah, yeah that was pick. my pick. Yeah. yeah. Pick. Yep. As Moser. Remember Moser? No, nope. I don't nope. remember Moser. Nope. But uh-huh. that was Matt O'Leary. So there you go. He's well still done, acting. Well um, done. About tonight's movie, Frailty. I'm Michael- going to tell you right now, I am not going to remember the name of this movie. Frailty? Like, it's in, like, not a good title. In a few weeks, I'm going to completely forget what this movie was called. This is a terrible title. It is a bad title. I don't relate it to this movie at all. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. Don't that like may it. be a thing. Maybe that's uh, yeah. it's been keeping it like under yeah, the radar I think all so. these years. I'm, it needs I'm, a better yeah, title. In a few weeks, I am gonna in, it, in a few weeks when we have like random mailbag and we're like a couple weeks ago we watch Frailty. I'm gonna be like, we watch what? Was I here for that? I guarantee. Yeah. Guarantee. What's it mean? Now you've seen the movie. I don't know. I know there's a quote, and I don't know if it's from the Bible or if it's a biblical scholar mm-hmm. or something like that. It's like God sees frailty but understands or has uh, understanding. Something like that. And I'm like, hmm. okay, is that where this comes from? Is King human James frailty? <laughs> like, is that the thing we're talking about? Uh, you well, know. the tagline is no soul is safe. Is, yeah, that, is that the frailty? It, is then that, you're yeah. saying it's a religious horror movie, right? Well, it is a religious horror yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. that's how you're advertising it. Yeah. No soul is safe. Yeah. Religious mm-hmm. horror. Frailty. Okay. Human frailty. That was what was Bill Paxton's undoing. As sure. the hero of this movie. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Michael Whitaker writes in and says, this is a nice little thriller with McConaughey just about to become a real big star. I think he'd already become a big star. Yeah, I think he was a big star before yeah. this. Time to Kill and all that stuff was... He was already a pretty big star. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and Paxton being a great dad turned psychopath. Actually, <laughs> this works well as a Father's Day weekend pick. <laughs> yeah, g- yeah, good call, oh Holly. God, good job. Is. Was that why you... Okay, you know, so it wasn't... We're no, recording it, we on totally, Father's Day weekend. We totally yeah. planned that. Uh, Synergy. <laughs> right? There you go. Bam. 
Uh, movie by Fathers. Um, Sobe Detura writes in and says, it's a really great film, especially as Paxson was in front of the camera as well as behind it. Not only is it a great genre film with a great twist, but Paxton gets the most out of his actors, especially the kid actors, to drive home the family falling apart narrative. Yeah. The kid actors were so good were and really not good. annoying at all. Yeah. They were really good. Absolutely. I agree with that. They, they understood subtlety in a way a lot of kid actors don't. Yeah, for sure. But that, I think, is direction. That's the direction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, That's great. Uh, I love yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Um, about last week's movie, which was Highlander. Yes. 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 Uh, Grant Parrish writes in and says, a movie where a Scotsman pretends to be an alien, pretending to be an Egyptian, pretending to be a Spaniard who asks a French, asks a French American what it's like to be Scottish. Oh, wait. That's Highlander 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen to that episode to hear us learn about Highlander 2 for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Darren Rook says, hi guys, I love this film. Easily the best one of the film series. And as they say, there, there can, can be, be only, only one. one. Yes. Uh, Michael Whitaker said, uh, my, uh, Christopher Lambert played the tattooed monk in Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. Oh, okay. Uh, from okay. what I remember, he trained extensively to be on screen and was killed in two seconds. <laughs> well, Aww, that'll happen. <laughs> Uh, Scraw 70, 793 says, listening to this episode, for some reason, I had it in my foggy head that Brian May of Queen did the music to Mad Max. Uh, but alas, when I looked it up, it was an entirely different Brian May. Yeah. I hope they do not remake Highlander because there can be only one. Except <laughs> with the franchise. But there's what, six? Yeah. There's six. And a TV show. Yeah. And, a and show. uh probably should have looked this up before we did the episode, but Henry Cavill has been attached to a Highlander remake. Because I don't I mean, hate what? it. He's in The Witcher. I'm okay with yeah. that. He's got swords. Yeah, I'm fine so, yeah. with it. It's fine. Sword guy. Okay. He was on the Tudors for a long tutors. time. Yep, yeah, there one you of go. My favorite shows. Obvious choice, yeah. career choice. I'm fine with it. I don't mm-hmm. think there's any movement on that, though, but who knows? Uh, Mopar Mutt says, I love that film. I have two versions of the original. I have the quote unquote sequels as well, and even have Connor and Duncan's replica katanas. Nice. Uh, Pat Hetfield says, I saw Highlander in the theater when it came out, but I don't remember any giant demons fighting each other. I guess I'll have to watch it again. Uh, Pat, we're talking about it. It's at the very end of the movie, the quickening. There's yeah. Animated. Yeah. There's like mm-hmm. animated demons. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the week prior to that, we watched those movies. were demons, Colin. They were demons. Yeah. They those, were real demons. Those were demons. Yeah. Yeah. Not sinners. There's a difference. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, the week before that, we watched a movie called Cyborg. Oh, yeah, oh, that's yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Zod says, um, okay, no. so we, we were talking about uh, Cyborg was the byproduct of two failed movies. And that was Masters of the Universe 2 and mm-hmm. Spider-Man that never right. got made. Right. Uh, Zod says, oh, and we said that there were a bunch of movies that Canon made that tanked the studio. Right. And Zod says, the fact, all those movies you listed that Canon made, like Life Force, Invaders from Mars, and Masters of the Universe, I loved as a kid, and I didn't realize that they had flopped. Don't you love that? When as a kid, you're like, wait, or when you learn, like, wait, the whole world didn't love this the way I did, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're like, I, well, yeah. it's a big movie. It's amazing. It was a big thing. Yeah. Nope. I'm, like, I'm still in denial that people don't like Masters of the Universe. <laughs> I love that movie. I don't care. I know you're looking at me, Colin, with those puppy eyes, but I love that movie. I don't care. Colin's in disbelief right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. stunned disbelief. Don't care, I remember. I remember. There's a lot of love for Skeletor. Skeletor is really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah he is. The, the He's really cool. Love story on the. We got to come here. Okay. Uh, I didn't say I love all of it. I know. I just love. Ran it. out of money at the end. If I remember, they're fighting in like a void. <laughs> they have no set. I don't see a problem okay. with that. <laughs> uh, Bill Hainer says, "Spider Man, Spider Man, never made, so we got Van Dam." <laughs> <laughs> Well done. Love it. <laughs> uh, Simon Carter says, I want to say Ralph Muller, who was the main, oh, oh uh, who was in Cyborg as one of the bad guys, right? Gotcha. Uh, was also the main bad guy in Best of the Best 2. I mean, it's no gladiator, mm. but I enjoyed mm. it. I'm intrigued. <laughs> movie called Best of the Best. There's no way it can be that good, right? Um, I don't know. Have yeah. we seen Best of the Best oh, to see Best of the Best Oh, two? stay tuned for Best of the Best. Oh, boy. <laughs> stay tuned for that. That's coming. Uh, we were talking about Life Force being one of the movies that bankrupted canon. John Threat says Life Force is a hidden gem. Content is poorer for not having studios like Canon Films anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Waskily Weird Rabbit says, I love the 80s cyborg obsession. I grew up on this robo and I grew up on this Robocop and an obscure Stan Winston worked on movie that Stan Winston worked on right before Robocop. 
called The Vindicator. Uh, the only place I've been able to find it is on YouTube, and it's mostly the 80s Canadian sci-fi movie schlock, but I remember the cyborg in it was an interesting well, design. Well, I'm going to put nice. that on my list for future reference. Yeah. With Stan Winston's mm-hmm. cyborg. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you again, all of you, for writing yes. in. We really yeah, appreciate thank it. You. That was a full appreciate bag. It. Thank you. And now we're going to go around the table. Michaela! Get us going. Uh, frailty. Yeah. The title's the worst thing about it. Yep. I'm going to say it. The title's bad. It's forgettable. The poster is also bad. It looks like the firm. It's it, bad. It, it's Matthew McConaughey, but it looks like Dan Stevens. Yeah. And it's because it's all blown up. out. Extreme yeah. contrast. It's very of the time, I will say. Um, very of the time. It's an ominous axe and a stump. Yep. Uh, that is. That's Otis. Yeah. Otis. Um, it. It's a great movie. It's great actors. Great kid actors. Very rarely do kid actors not bother me or do I not find them believable. I am a little concerned about the kid actors in this movie. Like they might have been genuinely traumatized a little bit. Um, it, it is a little disappointing that there's not much blood or gore in this. I could have just used just a slight, just a little something, um, especially when people are getting hit in the head with lead pipes and stuff. Um, but they always seem to cut away or fade away from the is violence when it's they happening. Have kids in the scene. It, I'm think? sure it is. I'm sure that's part of it. Or maybe this movie just thinks it would make it more lowbrow if you showed that stuff, you know? Um, I don't know. But I could use that. But that's just a minor complaint. Overall, I love all the complicated layers to this movie. I love... I'm surprised that I like the reveal that it is supernatural. Usually I would hate that, but I'm okay with it in this movie because like they covered all their bases seemingly and the acting is good. And I mean, Matthew McConaughey is really not in this movie a lot, but he's good when he is on screen. Um, he's very, this movie reminds me that he's a good actor. Yeah. He has a very, (laughs) um, like foreboding presence when he's on screen and his calmness, it's different than his, um, He's acting in True Detective. It's not the same because I feel like with that actor, like or that character, you could feel like something was bubbling like right below the, fir- the surface, yeah. right? Where this one, like the stillness goes all the way down. Yeah, yeah, like there is no crazy person under the surface. This is and that's who he parts. is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you can't rattle him, you know. Um, and just yeah, it's so good. I loved it. I like I said, Holly, it's been on my list for a long time to bring, so I would definitely recommend it. Colin, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I love it. I think it's uh, something about um, the it's well part of the style. The fact that he did show so much restraint. I mean, I know, uh, you know, it's like I love uh, crazy horror movies too, and they go big, you know. But it also it it kind of brings that um, it feels more real. And I think that's why it makes the horror more real because mm-hmm. it's disturbing. Yeah, you know, it's like this is like a real film. You know, uh, yes, it is. yeah, uh, <laughs> highly recommended a, 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 a real thriller. I know they said, um, I think as I was reading the night of the hunter came up a lot as an inspiration mm. or the, the, the tone, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm like, that means that these guys are Brett Hanley, the writer, mm-hmm. you know, it's like they had a uh, familiarity with like classic movies. And I think that's kind of what I see here. This isn't an experimental film. Right. It's done in a classical way. It's a, it's a good story that they're like, we just have confidence in the story, you know, and you got good acting. I mean, it's like uh, all around. I thought that this was a, a plus uh, movie. Yeah. I mean, it's a, uh, you know, a shame that more people haven't seen it or have they, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people seem to know about it and everybody who's seen it seems to think on it uh, fondly. Yeah. So, I mean, I would definitely recommend this. It's a, a, a great A thriller horror movie holly what'd you think yeah this like i said earlier this was the first time watch for me i just thought that all the components sounded like something to be right up my alley and i was fucking right this was definitely up my alley um i thought the acting was really great the direction was fantastic like we were saying earlier you know the, the kid acting was great and i think that was in part because the direction was so good um cinematography did some impressive stuff i wasn't expecting i like the atmosphere the ambiance um it just works for me. I, I'm i kind of glad it wasn't more gory because it was already pretty horrifying, like psychologically. I think it would have been too over the top and it would have been too extreme if it had been really bloody, um, really graphic. Um, and I think it would have been harder to see that happen in scenes with kids. I think that would have been really difficult to watch. Um, so I was OK that it wasn't gory. Normally, I, I want more of that. But yeah, in this case, it was OK. Um, 
Yeah, I think the my only complaint is that that's a stupid title. I don't like that title at all. I mean, oh, and I did have a little tidbit about um, Otis, the axe. Um, so when Bill Paxton was scouting this movie, um, he came across a homeless man that he tried to give him some cash, and the guy refused. He said he didn't want any charity. He's like, okay, well, how about I take how about I take your namesake and I give you money for it? And I put it in the movie. And the man's name was Otis. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> cool story. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool. Um, yeah, th- it didn't do great. This, I think the budget was like 14 million and I think it made like 17 million. Mm. So not great. Um, but I don't really get, maybe it was the marketing. Cause I thought this was a great movie. This mm-hmm. was really good. Um, I would definitely watch this again. Um, I have to say, Nothing surprised me. I kind of saw everything coming. Oh, really? Gotcha. I did. Well, tell I, me about that. That what? Key, what? What was the clue? Um, just I feel like just watching movies like this, I just get used to looking for the little things. Um, my first one was the kid actors. The little Adam, the kid actor for Adam, looked too much like Matthew McConaughey. Oh, I was like, mm, no, that's got to be him. Um, and then just like the little pieces. Like the little breadcrumbs that they dropped along the way, you know, the comment about the cop, mm-hmm. like, have you thought about being a cop? I was like, oh, well, he's going to be a cop yeah, in the there's end. There's something else yeah. going on here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't um, trust this uh, story. Yeah. yeah. So just the, the only, and then like um, him him with um, Powers Booth, I was like, okay, Powers Booth is on his list and that's why he's he's taken him. Um, I get, is yeah. it because you're sitting there going like, well, then what other, why is this character telling him these things? You know, like, yeah. what is his... Oh, no, I still had questions, and I was still, like, wondering. Yeah. I, I wasn't without wonder during this movie at all. And even, like, the supernatural stuff, I was always like, okay, is it real or is it not real? Yeah. So that stuff, yeah, it, I wasn't sure which way it was going to go. Um, Just, like, the twists weren't that much of a surprise, but I still really liked it. I, I thought it was a great movie. Um, I would absolutely recommend it, and I, I'll probably watch it again because it was, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, and you're talking about the atmosphere too. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention: uh, music's by Brian Tyler. Uh, he's ended up doing like, yeah, I, I think this is maybe one of his earlier things, and now he does. You know, it seems like he's the go-to guy for like horror movies and stuff. Yeah. But a lot of it, I think, if you compare this score to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, mm-hmm. or maybe it was his Friday the Thirteenth remake, but there's like these these piano notes. Like he does, it's like tragedy music. Yeah. Right, you know, right. It's like he has the the sound of tragedy. Yeah, uh, which that he uses is perfect for this. Yeah, yeah. So oh, it's a um, a fun, <laughs> fun little juxtaposition. This soundstage was across from the soundstage for Legally Blonde. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, nice. so they're filming, they're filming this at the same room. time. So yeah. like, he'd come out like with a bloody axe, and Reese Witherspoon would be out there in like a pink suit. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you shooting over there? I yeah. thought that was really funny. Yeah, awesome. All right, well, I guess that means this movie is Freak Show approved. I think Sean would like it. I think so. So if you're following along, that means you have to watch it. That's the rule. Um, Okay, next week we're watching a movie that's chosen by Sean. Mm -hmm. I think. (laughs) Yeah. And that should be the aforementioned and and previously promised Butcher Baker, Nightmare Maker. All right. And Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep thinking that it's Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right. (laughs) There's a double feature for you. Watch both of those together. (laughs) All right. So that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.